online so how we can build a brand uh, no in in this online era now no so we have social media at one place and then we have a lot of other portals also and other stuff online pr lot of things happening so how we can build a brand you know in this tough times i mean i would like to say that social media is one such um, you know technology or a uh, tool that is available to marketers that has equalized the entire landscape of how marketers uh, you know were there or how corporates were so whether it's a um, you know a, a product with a market marketing budget of uh, you know some uh, 10 000 rupees or a big corporate with uh, crores of rupees social media has tried to make sure that they uh, they they equalize all the 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 entire landscape in which all marketers uh, you know currently um, uh, operate so in a way you know a, 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 a you know tightly uh, controlled budget of 1000 or 2 10000 rupees can also do a great marketing uh, outreach to its target audience which are you know a company with a multi million dollar uh you know revenue or, or or maybe a budget can also reach out to their target audience so it's in a way a very very uh, powerful tool that is available to the marketers irrespective of what your marketing uh, budget is like um, and you can be very very effective in your marketing um, uh, campaigns so uh, i think social media can really help you drive the ma- and maximize the value that you can get from your marketing budgets uh you can have the you know you can reach out to the right target audience you can do a lot of good um, marketing through influencers uh, which definitely comes at a little premium but you know if you are a premium brand and if you want to really gain a good uh, marketing um, uh, uh, appeal then you know influencer marketing can be a great one um consistent messaging is another one that you can drive if you form a community of people who uh, are attracted towards your brand or the kind of product that you have you can build a very consistent marketing campaign uh, by building a community and then attracting that uh, community i mean i'll give you an example you know a lot of these um, companies uh, who are into uh, say um, um like uh, kids brands uh, they have these communities which are for mothers right uh, and they create those communities on the uh, social uh, media uh, they have these uh, working moms and it's actually a community that is by one of your um, uh, you know your kids brand like uh, lego or anyone and then they tap into that community of mothers to drive a lot of sales and value and do a lot of marketing push uh, similarly you know companies who are into say automobile they would have a community of all the um, uh, people who love to go for races uh, and car racing and all of that and that becomes a very good proposition to be on social media and attract that kind of audience uh, keep them engaged uh, do consistent branding and messaging and you you continue to tap into that community to do further sales um another aspect that i really like about social media which is very you know i i don't see too many people really uh, using that but crowdsourcing can be a significant one on social media uh, you can drive a lot of um you know engagement uh, with your target audience through crowdsourcing um uh, i've seen corporates uh, drive a lot of campaigns like maggi did uh, so much of crowdsourcing um push uh, by asking uh, people to tell their two minute maggi story for example yes. or uh, you know so these are very good way of uh, engaging your crowd using crowd sourcing using a lot of these community building engagement um uh, and influencer t- uh, by tapping into your pool of influencers that you want to go out and do an outreach so those are a few right so this has a two uh, follow up questions uh, one is uh, uh, which one is your social media uh, plat- favorite platform where you feel you know this is a good roi driven aspect it it brings i think uh, one has to when it comes to social social media i think you need to have very solid campaign uh, which can be you know linked to a social cause or a social um, or, or a compelling need in the community which your customers may be thinking of i mean uh, i really love these whole social marketing uh, campaigns that are driven by tata for example uh, tata t you know uh, which is about you know thought provoking uh, those kind of campaigns you can run very effectively on social media also uh, start to build a community 
so i think social media is a lo lot about how do you build that community of uh, like minded uh, people who have the similar sort of taste uh, and you can drive a lot of your push and your brand appeal to them so i would say so for example luxury brands people who are into luxury commodities who who keep buying them they would love to engage with uh, you know a, a, we can form a community and then keep pushing our messages to them like you you would see a lot of luxury car brands actually tap into it they keep having these races some uh, vintage car rallies and stuff like that they have built a community uh, and they keep tapping into that community to do further sales because their right target audience is right there so i think i i'm a big fan of that because it's very targeted it can be very engaging uh and it can it, it's very low cost low maintenance so i think that's a that's a great uh, way of doing social media right perfect uh, and uh, um, no last year if i'm not wrong uh, influencer marketing you no know, did get some bad mouth around you no know, because of you uh, know uh, over promotion maybe or not uh, doing the right stuff which influencer should be doing so what is what is your take you uh, know uh, how we should decide that you uh, know this should be a good influencer for us or not no that's a very valid point and that's the reason why recently there were those influencer guidelines and uh, things that have already been rolled out and there is a lot of um, focus on now being uh, making sure that you're promoting ethical influencer uh, marketing also i think uh, somewhere as uh, brand custodians and then again coming back to your point about reputation uh your reputation is built by making sure that you are uh, whatever you are doing uh, whether it is as a marketer or as an influencer you are you know if you don't have uh, the right reputation in the market nobody is going to hear you so i think some of these bad influencers or influencers who are just doing unethical stuff they will kill their bra own brand or they will kill their own reputation if they continue to drive the way they are driving things so uh, i think um, nowadays uh, people are uh, you know uh, no, uh, people are very, very well aware they are you know everybody is reading everybody is hearing the same stuff and i think somewhere some of these things will not go unnoticed uh, so whether it is brands they need to be very responsible uh, in the way they drive marketing within their um, co within corporates i mean i had uh, once tweeted and it became like uh, really really big on social media this was around the fact that uh, you know there are certain um, uh, channels which are uh, you know a lot about just uh, fear mongering and uh, you know fake news and all of that i think it's up to the marketers to stop funding those channels right uh, make sure that you choose uh, who you relate to as a marketer or as a brand uh, you need to make those ethical choices and be be out there to make sure that you're not really associating the brand with certain channels which are just doing uh, you know horrible uh, negative promotions or siding with one party then the other or you know or politically connected i think that's something that i would always call out that as a marketer um, uh, and to be an ethical marketer it is our uh, social obligation to make sure that uh, we partner with the right kind of media partners Uh, we partner with the right kind of influencers and we we take that responsibility to drive ethical marketing right so would you like to make a comment on uh, a recent um, hiccup which mentioned about uh, gora vasan and uh, that baba ka daba story <laughs> No, no, I don't want to comment about all these controversies. It's not my domain, not my expertise, not at all. But uh, in general, I would like to urge all the marketers, um, you know, through your um, channel and otherwise also uh, in whatever small way I can do, that one has to be. I mean, I, I think that marketing and communication has a big role to play when it comes to ethics. So they yes. need to be very ethical in the way they are trying to uh, drive uh, ROI or uh, return on reputation and whatever to to ensure that they are uh, actually doing their job honestly by engaging with the right partners with ethical partners. That's all that I have to say. I mean, I will do my bit. Uh, that there are people who don't want to, then it's up to them. Eventually, you know, people will realize. Ah, I understand. Yes, you are right. You are right. So moving back to uh, you no know, employees, which of course uh, you know is a part of our brand. ending aspect uh, so what internal communication tools or maybe you no know, you must be using out to improve uh, the employee satisfaction or you no know, communication among the employees and how does it helps basically 
I think communication to employees is uh, driven by a gamut of different, uh, you know, uh, areas that you need to keep in mind. One, uh, it cannot just be about top down. You know, a lot of times as communicators, we make the mistake of thinking that, you know, everything has to be leader led and uh, let the leaders be upfront and just talk about it, doing a certain number of town halls and driving some top down approach is not always the best approach. So I, I personally feel that it has to be a top down and a bottoms up approach as well. So you also need to have your uh, ears on the ground. So it has to be a mix of certain uh, sort of channels that help you to not just do the top down approach where the leader connect happens or leader communication is driven by, but also to see what are the people on the ground saying and, and ensure that that verbatim is also something that is going out to the larger audience. So um, we do a lot of different uh, activities and different uh, uh, action plans are drawn to make sure that there is a a mix of a lot of different uh, stuff that we do when it comes to internal communication. So, you know, typically you know, everybody does a lot of town halls. We do a lot of email communication uh, for email uh, and other uh, some similar stuff. We have Populo, which we use as a tool very effectively because it helps to measure the reach of uh, all your communication that is going out. A uh, couple of um, you know, sometimes we've also seen when we look at rank and stack the different uh, different um, uh, communication uh, channels that we use, which are the ones which are most popular, whether it's a town hall, face-to-face -face or virtual uh, meetings or emails or newsletters, or, uh, you know, sometimes we also use uh, video communication and stuff like that. I think one of the tools that is the most effective um, um, is email. You know, I, I think email has just not gone away. It is always one of the most favorite of all employees to, uh, you know, continue to read a lot of emails. Uh, we've tried to push intranet also um, in a big way. Uh, in one of my uh, previous organizations, we also uh, launched the Workplace, uh, which is um, a very effective enterprise solution for internal communications. Uh, by Facebook, uh, and that was again a very big success, uh, at least in the organization that I was there, because um, one, it was very, it was a medium that people are using in their personal capacity, so it was a medium that they're used to, uh, and, and then there were other tools also that uh, we keep using, so in a way, uh, I think internal communication is a, a mixed bag where you you have to use a lot of creativity to drive the messages uh, with different channels, different ways of communicating. I used to have um, one uh, video communication channel called, uh, we named it after Hard Talk uh, in one of our organization where we used to uh, do interaction with top leadership team uh, without really giving them an understanding of what are we going to ask them. So those questions were never shared with them and they were uh, brought on the camera and we used to ask them tough questions that were there on the minds of all the people. Uh, and that worked very effectively because uh, whatever responses we got were very honest responses from the leadership team. Uh, and that really, that, that really caught on with a lot of our employees because they knew that we were asking them very tough questions, which are, there, which are the questions that they wanted to ask the leadership. So I think you have to be very creative and be honest about what exactly are you trying to achieve. This is something uh, phenomenal that you have mentioned about the hard talks because if this kind of communication is happening between the company and employees mm -hmm. and uh, the management, uh, I'm sure it is going to have a lot of trust coming coming from the employee aspect, and I'm sure their integrity will increase for sure. That so this is amazing, Absolutely. perfect. So so on a quick note, uh, if you can share the product launch 